You've heard the phrase pound the table, but how about flip the table? Who are the players that I would absolutely be distraught to see the Dolphins pick with the 21st overall selection? That here today on Locked On Dolphins. You are Locked On Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins and co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip up the cap to our everydayers because it is your team every day. We don't just say it. We live it here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL. For $20 off on last-minute tickets for the lowest prices, guaranteed. So today's show is the other side of the coin. Uh, and I try not to, through the, the pre-draft process, I try to be respectful of the players as, as people while talking about them and, and getting into the economics of the draft and not getting overly negative with the coverage. But it is worth having the discussion because I've always told this story about who my Charles Harris players would be. And if you're not familiar with the story, uh, I was in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, doing NFL draft coverage with Fan Rag Sports at the time with John Owning, who now works at Pro Football Focus, and Joe Marino, who is my co-host on Locked On NFL Scouting. And um, the elevator ride down from the hotel when we first were leaving to go to the studio Joe and I had the conversation, who's like your doomsday player? And my answer was Charles Harris. And the Dolphins drafted Charles Harris. And that story did not end well uh, for Miami. Obviously, uh, Charles went on to have himself some later stage career success uh, with the Detroit Lions, which you're obviously happy for the player. You just hate that the learning and growing pains had to happen at the expense of a first round pick for your favorite team. So instead of calling it doomsday scenarios, you instead look at it through the lens of like, who would you flip the table for, right? Like the, the, the pound the table is the guys, this is my guy. Like I pounded the table for Jalen Waddle ahead of the 2021 NFL draft. They got him. It worked out great. It doesn't always work that way, but that's like to date. My best experience has been having Waddle and Jalen Phillips as top eight players in the class for Miami. The Dolphins land them both, and they both turn out to be absolute rock stars for this football team. So that was a really cool draft class for me. Um, but I have had people all throughout the pre-draft building up to this week asking me, who's your Charles Harris, Kyle? Who, who's your doomsday player? These are the kinds of players that I would be totally distraught with. And uh, I think the fo the primary focus for theirs is going to be pick number 21. Um, there's a lot less ways as you get deeper into the, the draft in a second round pick. I, I think you could probably point to just a, a, some positions. I would say, man, I'd be really ticked off if they drafted this. And I, I think that would be running back for, for the blanket statement, first two rounds where the Dolphins have picks 21 and 55. If you picked any running back, even where I have Trey Benson graded, and that's another nice affirmation. You know, he's, he's my top running back. I do have a second round grade on him. Um, it does not account for positional value. So I know some people read the, because I did the the horizontal board that we showed some of yesterday on the show, told you guys could find it over at Touchdown Miami. But then also I did the traditional one through 200, which I've already decided is a massive mistake because People that don't follow the show with any regularity just click the link, read the one through 200, don't bother to read the horizontal board, and they see where a running back's great, and they're like, this running back's not going to go here, or Peyton Wilson's not going to go top 15. Why is he ranked in the top 15? Even though the print, before you list the board, says this is not adjusted for positional value, it's not adjusted for character or injury or medical background, uh, Does it's not accounted for any of those sorts of things. Age all the things that you would typically care about is the fine print. It was more meant to be just a reflection of fit within the scheme. So a player like Trey Benson, even where he's graded, 
when you consider the investments Miami has made in Devon Achan, re-upping Raheem Mostert, putting another year on the back end of his deal for a contract extension, not moving on from Jeff Wilson. If they used a first two-round pick on another back for the stable, yeah, I'd flip the table. I'd be pretty upset about it. <laughs> um, so I would include that for first and second round, and then we'll narrow the scope and get into uh, just the, the the first round pick at 21. I know uh, I went on WQAM with Joe Rose this morning, and he asked me, is it safe to write off quarterback, uh, safety, or quarterback, cornerback, tight end, and running back? And I would not dismiss tight end, uh, and I could see a pathway there for that being an, an attractive spot depending on who's available and how you get to being on the board. You trade out a 55 and get a little later and somebody's available. Um, I wouldn't flip the table for, for some of those situations. I'd probably be a little bit surprised if they stuck at 55 and picked the tight end. And I don't think Brock Bowers makes it to you. Um, I'd be pretty, I would flip the table for a quarterback just because I know how the quarterback board is going to break. I know the dolphins are getting ready to pay their quarterback and to use in a window where you still have a reduced cap hit, bringing in what would be a tier two or tier three quarterback uh, with a first or second round pick in this year's class, I uh, would, I think, be flip the table worthy. So quarterback, running back, and then probably off ball linebacker. Like I know I have Peyton Wilson graded at this certain stratosphere. He's one of the, the 15 best, like just pure film scheme fit grades in the class. But the medicals here are, are so concerning. And I said it yesterday on the show. I, don't, I couldn't draft him the first two rounds. So even with Miami picking at 55, if they drafted a linebacker after bringing in Jordan Brooks and bringing in Anthony Walker to go with David Long, you're probably going to be a nickel and three safety heavy defense anyway. I would be pretty upset. And that's in spite of an acknowledging, man, the film is absolutely outstanding. I think it'd be a good fit. I just think it's overkill at a uh, value diminished position. Would say it would be, those are my blanket uh, first and second round positions that I think I'd be underwhelmed with. Now going individually, position group by position group, we'll do that next and start on the offensive side of the ball. That's up next here on this episode of Locked On Dolphins. So stick with us. Buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Going to the game is supposed to be fun. And thanks to Game Time, it's never been easier to get tickets for Major League Baseball. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for the MLB, which makes getting tickets getting tickets even faster and easier than before. And the prices actually go down on Game Time the closer you get to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Tickets with flash deals, you can save even more on exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game, and you could save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL, L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off. Download Game Time today for last minute tickets. Lowest price is guaranteed. So we'll start at wide receiver, and I'll say something that I think maybe will be surprising to some people, but Brian Thomas Jr. is not a flip-the-table player for me. Um, I know a lot of people are a little surprised that Brian Thomas I have graded below, say, Xavier Worthy and Lad McConkey and Xavier Leggett and Ricky Pearsall. He's kind of in the Tier 2 of wide receivers in this class. But as I alluded to yesterday, there's a one-year versus a three-year conversation with Brian Thomas. And if you put his three-year forecasting against those names, I think he transcends most, if not all of them. The question for Brian Thomas would be, okay, how much can you do in year one? And if the Dolphins feel confident that there's a role here, I, under, I see that pick, I understand that pick. In the same sense of, of Xavier Worthy, who's graded right next to Brian Thomas amongst wide receivers in this year's class. Some people would, would probably be pretty distraught about a 170 pound wide receiver. And I, I get why you would maybe not want that to be your premier investment, but that's not a flip the table player for me because I see the uh, inherent value of what you're trying to be offensively. This is a player who I think could have had major, major production 
if not playing with Quinn, who was a quarterback. Um, and that's in spite of playing in a loaded skill group. So I think uh, Xavier Worthy, I would get at 21. Would I be head over heels to the moon getting on the podcast on Thursday night after the live stream that we're doing for the NFL draft coverage with Joe Marino and Locked On Fell Scouting and absolutely going crazy? No. But we would sit here and we would talk about you know the identity of the offense. We would we would talk about uh, solving the third pass catcher dilemma that this team had last year and, and having contingencies for what your identity is in offense for when your two rare, rare players uh, are, are compromised in some way, shape, or form. And we we talk about all those things. I wouldn't flip the table, though. I think one wide receiver I would flip the table for. Um and again, flip the table is, is not being enthused about. I'm looking at my draft board here over on the side. Is, is Keon Coleman. Um, I know that there is a physical component to his game. You know, he has a massive catch radius. I know he can win down the field. I know the GPS timing had him as one of the faster, like, functional play speed receivers. But I just didn't see the separation on tape. And when you consider the big roadblock, early into a tongue of Lowe's career with his style of play was separation. And then you think about Cedric Wilson on the outside, trying to separate and Keon Coleman's bigger and he's more physical than Cedric Wilson. But I don't think from a separation standpoint as a rookie receiver, he gives you that much more. So if you told me that the dolphins were to draft theoretically Keon Coleman in the first round, I would flip the table for that. At tight end. I think realistically the only player that you would draft in the first round uh, is Brock Bowers. I've seen some mocks with uh, Jatavian Sanders that that uh, drum beat seems to have died down a little bit, which uh, I think is is merciful uh, because I don't think that's optimizing your value. You have a third round grade on Jatavian Sanders. If you got the fifty five and you manipulated the board and you pick Sanders, like I get it. We would talk about what Sanders can be and his growth potential. Um, I'd be probably a little underwhelmed if you stuck and pick him at 55. And I'd certainly, I, I'd probably flip the table if you picked him in the first round, to be honest. Offensive line. I, I think there's one name in particular here who is is looming as a first round pick for somebody. And that's kind of the the insider buzz is, is trending in this direction. Uh, and that's Patrick Paul from Houston. This This would be a flip the table player for me. And it's not the positional value, and it's not what Patrick Paul could or could not be as a player. But I think he's tackle exclusive. He's he's a big guy. So putting Patrick Paul, who has some of the um, consistency with his hand timing and his punch placement, you're going to put that inside for a guy who's six, seven and a half. And his 36 and a half inch arms where he's got this really long reach and long punch and nothing's really compact. And you're going to play him out of position in year one or, or you're otherwise going to redshirt him for a year. Uh, and to use a first round pick on that, because I think that's the only swing of the bat you would have at Patrick Paul is in the first round. I would that that would be a player that I would just not fundamentally agree with the process. on. I would have a really hard time digesting your first round pick going to that player. And Miami has turned Austin Jackson into a success story, uh, but he was not a success story in his first three seasons. And I think that's the kind of pathway you'd be signing yourself up for with Patrick Paul. And if we're just being honest, the Dolphins can't afford that. They cannot afford that kind of timeline for a first round pick with what the past couple of years have been with using their first round picks on big money free or big, big money veteran contracts. This is a player that has to play early period and then it's not going to be well he's he's going to finally start to put it together in year four that doesn't help that does not help this team uh, on the interior uh this might seem crazy to say i don't see any any player remotely projected to go in the top 50 picks maybe cooper bb but i don't think that's a candidate in the first round anyway you could tell me they traded down in the late twenties or early thirties and draft Christian Haynes. I'd be okay with it. You tell me, tell me they trade down in the late twenties, early thirties and draft Jackson powers, Johnson or Zach Frazier. I'd be okay with it. You could tell me they stick at 21 and draft Graham Barton. I'd be cool with it. 
If you told me Talise Fuaga falls in your lap, I'd be over the moon with that one. So there's not too many players that I think there's a realistic intersection of like going to go in the top 40 picks and being catastrophically a disaster in my mind for the Dolphins. Is that the same over on the defense side of the ball? That's a story for segment three, which is coming your way next. You're locked on Dolphins, so stick with us. Today's episode of Locked on Dolphins is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we need the opportunity to get things off of our chest. Big or small, certain things in life can really start to wear you down. It's important to let that kind of stuff out, especially to somebody who is unbiased in your life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Therapy can be different for everyone. But BetterHelp, it's designed to be flexible, suited to your schedule. You can get signed up online. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. It is playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to slam dunks to home runs, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet an automatic win with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So as we shift gears over to the defensive side of the football here, and I ask myself, who are the flip the table candidates on defense? Uh, I, I think early edge guys, you have five candidates to go in the first round. Jared Verse, Leatu Latu, Dallas Turner, Darius Robinson, and Chop Robinson. I would put Chop Robinson in the same bucket as Brian Thomas. My ranking on him for the Dolphins and specifically their scheme is a little bit lower than I think what your consensus expectation is. And if you were to just randomly pull up one through 200 and see where I have Chop Robinson ranked with a second round grade, you'd probably think I'm kind of dumb. Uh, I heard it and I've read it and that's fine. But the point of it is what are you going to be in 2024? I would get why chop Robinson would be a pick, particularly behind you know, Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips as guys who are under contract. There's a little bit more leeway. You have a vet another veteran in the room is Shaq Barrett. Uh, you probably would sign another vet and go Barrett another vet and chop Robinson is your rotational pass rusher until the other guys come back. And then you'd have a really deep group health willing uh, for the home stretch. So I see the value in chop Robinson. Do I think it would be the best ROI with your pick at 21? No, but I wouldn't flip the table for him as a player. Um, I don't think any of the realistic first round interior defensive linemen in Byron Murphy and Johnny Newton are flip the table candidates. We've already talked about linebacker, I guess the other predictive linebacker that might go in this range and is at least a little interesting because he is more of a uh, positional flex guy is Edge Cooper from Texas A&M. Um, he can stand up and rush a little bit. He's a short area spy. I think they would have to have a really specific plan for him as a player, but I do have him graded in the same region of the draft as Brian Thomas and Chop Robinson. So it's not like I would be totally distraught with the value. That's just a player that you'd have to really sit down and do some soul searching and ask yourselves, okay, what's the vision for this player? Because they have to have one. This is not just a draft and plug type of player. That's a player. I think you optimize particularly in this defense with the other personnel that you have. I would not flip the table for Cooper DeGene. I know there's some people that that would be distraught and another defensive back. I get it. But uh, I, I do think he's a player who you could use as a staple in one of the other spots and continue to unlock the versatility of your other players. I think Chris Kaufman for three yards per carry, who was on with us last week, uh, makes a great point in his talking about to, talking points about Cooper DeGene. Uh, putting too much on a young player's plate too early is, is typically a first-class ticket to disappointment. And while I think Cooper DeGene long-term can be a multifaceted defensive weapon type of player, I think his appeal early is more flexibility to free up Ramsey and Fuller. Or, in theory, if you're going to play him at safety, 
Uh, it gives you more versatility to free up Javon Holland. And I think that's the thing for Miami that Holland coming into a contract, you're assuming he doesn't sign a contract extension. I think they, they have to be able to find the right pulse on is how do you maximize Javon Holland's abilities? Because Javon Holland, when he was at Oregon, he first started as a high safety and then he moved around and was in the nickel a whole bunch. And then he comes to Miami and they move him around. And then he just plays high safety and it, it, you're just waiting for him to get the opportunities to, to really be a defensive weapon. And you know, 2022, uh, the corner injuries really changed how they played on the back end, and it took them away from the line of scrimmage at times. So there were less opportunities to make plays on the ball. So there's some contextual stuff that's not really like you can't blame Javon Holland for it. But I do think Cooper DeGene, if they drafted him with the intent of him being a safety, would allow you to get better because it allows you to move Javon Holland. I do think at corner, this is the more interesting group. Uh, because I have three players, Terry and Arnold, Nate Wiggins, and Kool-Aid McKinstry, who are amidst my top 32 overall players. I have late ones on all three of these players. They're probably the only players that I would flip the table for for getting good value. <laughs> and some of this is Cam Smith, right? But some of this is also Kendall Fuller, and some of this is also what you're paying Jalen Ramsey. And some of this is bringing back uh, Nick Needham and having Cater Kohu, they legit run five deep on guys that should, in theory, be able to play corner either inside or outside at the NFL level. Four deep for sure. If you want to say Needham's versatility is safety to, to nickel and not outside to inside, and you're going to draft another corner, that would be the spot for me where I don't, in the first round, other than a linebacker, quarterback, and running back, and linebacker is the only one that has any players that I would consider to be plus value in that stratosphere anyway. Uh, cornerback is the only other spot that I would look at and say, hey, I think you got good value with the pick, but I'm still ticked off about it. <laughs> be that Arnold or Wiggins or McKinstry. Uh, I think Quinion Mitchell is the exception because Quinion Mitchell is, from a, a hierarchy perspective to me, I think one of the the six he's the sixth ranked player on my draft board. At that stage, I think he's better than Fuller. I think he immediately comes in as one of your starting two. Um, I don't expect him to be there. Even if he is, I don't think I necessarily expect the Dolphins to draft him. But I think that op that would open you up in theory for upgrading a starter. And I think that's the difference is Arnold Wiggins McKinstry. I still like a lot. I have late ones on them, but I don't think they're an upgrade over Kendall Fuller. I think Quinnell Mitchell's an upgrade over Kendall Fuller. So I put him in a little bit of a different bucket, but I certainly wouldn't like sit here and advocate for you to draft Quinnell Mitchell. So I think my authentic like flip the table players would be Keon Coleman, uh, Jatavian Sanders. This in the first round. Keon Coleman, Jatavian Sanders, Patrick Paul. Um. Peyton Wilson for medical reasons only. And then the corners that are not named Quinion Mitchell. They got a lot of ways that they can not make me mad on Thursday. <laughs> we'll see if they cooperate or not. That is going to do it for us here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. It is your team every day. Appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. We may or may not have some more content coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Fins up.